medical tourism, particularly to India, has occupied the national psyche for a while. There's been quite a bit of debate about uh, you know people being referred to doctors in India and all that. But one thing is medical tourism is with us to stay as long as there are cheaper options, as long as there's cutting edge technology elsewhere other than our country. Personally, I have uh, had the chance to visit India for medical treatment on the advice of a doctor who is a very well respected professional in this country, who felt that the diagnostic equipment which is here was not accurate enough to be able to determine the cause of treatment that is necessary effectively. At the same time, the cost factor was also uh, a part of what was put into consideration. For example, I was supposed to do some chemo, uh, six sessions or five days each year, at a total cost of 2.7 million shillings. Now, the hospital I went to in India, um, which by all means, Medanta Medi City, is a hospital which is equivalent to our best, in fact, if not better than our best. Each session was costing about 25,000 shillings. So that means that the total six sessions were less than 200,000. Now, on the basis of that cost alone, who would fail to take advantage? And would it matter if somebody has been paid, uh, you know, for me to make a saving of close to 2.4 million shillings? I think that is a moot point. What we have and what we must accept is the fact that diagnostics are not good in this country. We have very good doctors. I mean, the operation, uh, when I was diagnosed with cancer, I was diagnosed here. A very good, um, you know, uh, top-notch doctor. The treatment was first class. They, 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 um, then I underwent an operation which, by world standards, was one of the best by a local uh, surgeon. And I've been having follow-up uh, checkups with, in fact, like right now, I've just come from one. And, and so there are no issues about the quality of the doctors we have in the country. The only problem is there are too few to cover the, to the whole country. Two, the equipment that is available locally is not top-notch for various reasons. Some of them may be the cost of the equipment, some of them the, 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 the way the, op the equipment operates itself, that in this environment it might not be safe. For whatever reason, so the Indian option, as long as we have those shortcomings here, will continue to be a factor to consider whether we like it or not. We have seen um, senior government officials, you know, senior Kenyans going to treatment in South Africa, in the UK, in the US, in India. Why would that be? Why can't they take their medication here if everything was fine? One of the examples I like to give is also the cost of medication because now after the operation, after the treatment in India, the, theory, the chemotherapy and the, the radiotherapy and all that, um, there's medication that I'm supposed to be taking every day. When I buy it here, for a month's supply, it costs me between 17 and 20,000 shillings. When I went to India and I went to buy the first time, I thought, in fact, these people are not serious. Because when I asked for a month's supply, it was costing 1,700 rupees, which is roughly about 3,000 Kenya shillings. So now, every time I'll be sending for three months' supply at 9,000 shillings, instead of 60,000 shillings here. So that saving also is something that we must take into account. So my appeal is let us not demonize the Indian hospitals. They have something to offer, particularly in terms of cost, particularly in terms of, as I said, that cutting edge technology. Most of the hospitals I visited, I visited three or four, are actually have research centers such that there's continuous research into new diseases, into new ways of treating the life-threatening diseases that have come up, for example, like cancer, which is now spreading like white wildfire. The treatment is extremely effective, not necessarily an operation. You can actually get long-term medication and, you know, everything works just fine. So, I have come together with Health TV to try to help Kenyans uh, to access affordable and top-notch medical services in India. There's nothing to hide. Because only about three, four week, three, four months ago, our own president was in the, in the Indian capital of New Delhi. And he asked doctors, hospitals, the Medantas, the Fortis, the Apollos, to come and open branches here and treat Kenyans. Why would he do that if we already had enough of what we have? 
if we were already able to treat our people? Why would we go and appeal? Why would our president go and appeal to foreigners to come out and set up the hospitals here? For the, for the simple reason that their service is way ahead of what is available in Kenya. And therefore, traveling until they can come here, if they will come, of course, I do not know what, what was agreed at, at that particular meeting. But if and when they come here, for the time being, because we cannot sit, when you are sick, you cannot sit and wait for technology to find you. You have to go and look for it. So as long as we still need those services and they are not available here, the Indian option remains a very, very viable option. If you have issues with traveling to India, because again, uh, some con men have taken advantage of it, so you know, you'll get uh, some agent who will say they'll take you to some hospital and then they go and take your money and they will dump you in at the entrance of some hospital. We came across one such in August last year where uh, a Kenyan was dumped at a hospital called Artemis and you know the agent disappeared. So we had to put together a few coins, get him some palliative care for a bit so that he could be able to, 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 to fly back to the country. So now to avoid such, the services that the people that are link you with will offer you services. One, they will give you an estimated cost of treatment. First, they will also actually give you a proposed cost of treatment. Then they will give you an estimate cost. Then they will give you the estimated time duration of the treatment. And if you do choose to travel, they will provide documentation that will help you uh, get a visa. They will meet you at the airport in, in whichever country, in, in whichever town you go to, if it's Delhi, Mumbai, Chennai, Kerala, whatever it is. They will meet you, they will arrange for a pickup, you'll be taken to the hospital. And if you, after the treatment, you have to stay there for longer times, you know, for the convalescence and all that, they will arrange for accommodation, affordable, clean accommodation. And on the day of departure, they will make sure that they take you to the airport and you come back to Kenya safe and sound. What other deal can you expect? What would you rather do? Sit here and wait for God knows how long for these people to come here, or will you go and look for them where they are? As the saying goes, you strike when the iron is hot. One of the things I've learned about cancer, and, and you know, talking to doctors uh, both here and in India, is the fact that you cannot afford to wait for treatment of cancer. Once it is diagnosed, it requires action immediately because it spreads like wildfire. So it is important that you, as a person, take the responsibility to get treatment that you are sure is not driven by, 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 by profit, profiteering. I'm not saying that Kenyan doctors profiteer. As I said, I know very many good doctors. I've interacted with them both socially. I've interacted with them in their professional capacities. And we have super doctors here. But they are constrained by the numbers, they are constrained by the equipment available. So, let us forget about politicking about people's health. Yes, we'll eventually get there. Yes, we'll eventually have world-class uh, medications. But until that time, the people who can afford it go to the South Africans and the USA's and the UK's because that is very expensive. Those of us who have little money or who depend on Harambe's still have the option of India. But please make sure you get proper guidance before you take off. Make sure that you have all the information that is necessary for your stay in India to be uh, okay. Make sure that you have talked to professionals so that when you live here, you know what you are going into. You've been given everything in black and white. In the meantime, my appeal to the government is to hasten the acquisition of the 39 billion equipment that was to be bought for that was it diagnostic for diagnostics and treatment because also one of the things that we must agree is there is no point of diagnosing somebody with a sickness and then you are not able to treat it it does not help if i sometimes i tend to think that if you're told you have cancer you go down very quickly because you know you panic uh, you give up you know cancer is supposed to be a, a what's it called is a death sentence but i'm leaving proof that you can actually get out of it. Because I had cancer. I was operated, I've been treated. In August last year, I went to India. I was put through the, something called a PET CT scan, which normally will look through your body and find out if there are any cells left. And I had no cancer cells. So I've been healed, basically. But the danger is, 
once you get cancer, the chances of it coming back are always there. So you need to make sure that the follow-up medication, the follow-up uh, checkups, every now and then you are checked to see if it has come back, so that once it is found, intervention, once it is found early enough, then again, treatment is prompt. And I would also request many Kenyans, as many as possible, to please take your time and get screened for cancer. Should be it breast cancer, be it cervix, be it uh, uh, prostate. You know, there's something I understand from doctors called the tumor marker. This is a, a, a test which shows if you've got any cancer in your body. It is very, very important that you regularly get checked so that if you, ha if you have, if you are found to have cancer, it is found early enough and treated early enough and you will live your life normally just with the usual checkups that any other person with usual hypertension or diabetes or you know we get checked every now and then you live a pretty normal life thank you my name is richard kyoko kyundi i live in nairobi may god bless you health is not just about physical well-being it is about psychological social emotional spiritual well-being what we do here at fmri we bring a sense of inclusiveness to health so that well-being becomes a complete, holistic and a positive experience.